Oh, let's see what the force is brought to me. Alright. Let's have a look. More bases. Let's have a look. See what's in there. Hello and welcome back. So in this episode, I'm going to take you through the whole process from start to finish how I do a uh, command base for Lions Rampant. So as in the beginning you've seen there, I got a box from first course, so I thought I was unwrapping it as I might as well show you guys what's what's in it. So these are the Knights Command and Bartered Horses pack. It's the first time I've I've bought from a from first core, so let's have a look straight in for the characters there. So we've got a nice long speed there. I don't know where that shows up. Yeah, they've even taped the edge there so the point doesn't snap, which is awesome. So we've got them, and let's have a look at the characters. Ooh, got a couple of shields in there. Three shields, in fact. Them out of the way, so let's pick up this one first. So, this is this will be my line's rampant commander, the main honcho. He goes cast like nicely cast. Do not have as much cleanup on it either to do. Hmm, liking that one. Yeah, uh, in the pack, you also get the musician again, nicely cast. There's not like there's any flashing on that one neither. And the standard bearer. Again. Look sharp. You got them three there. And you get these three horses. Oh, so weird enough. So here we are. So there's one there. I think that's a standard bearer one. If I remember rightly, we've got that one there, which is the commander's one. Really impressed with these scopes. Pretty cleaning on these ones, but not much. And we've got these one. So what I'll do, I'll go away quickly, tidy these up, and give you a better look at, at them in a bit. So we're going to do these three miniatures right here. Uh, obviously the commander, the musician and the standard bearer. You're mainly going to be seeing the commander as the steps and techniques I'll be showing you. You can do all three, but if something comes up on the other ones, I'll show how to do that one as right. Um, and it just saves you watching the same sort of technique get played out over and over and over again. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start the process and here we go. These are the metallics we'll be using the day. Majority of the army painter because I think they've got the best coverage and obviously sit the Delray Rebooter armor. So the first thing we're going to start with is using the night scale, which is like a deep dark blue metallic. We're going to start painting the armor plates with this. I'm doing this because I want the commander to have a, a little to stand out from the rest and so the armor is not going to be plain silver. So yeah, all we do is go around the entire model and pick out all the armor parts. 
Um, if you don't have this colour and you want to follow on, if you mix a bit of blue with the gunmetal, it'll uh, more or less do the same. Give it a take. Alright, so yep, yeah, we're just going to go around the model, hit all the armour plates, and we'll go on the next step. Right, so we're going to start picking out the, some of the gold part of the armour. For my commander, I'm going to pick out uh, his knee pads, his elbow pads, uh, the trim around the helmet, and obviously the scabbard and some parts of the sword and other bits and pieces. Uh, this is just so, yeah, again, he pops on the table. You know who he is when you're looking at him. But he also, he's got some uh, nice, like, scale armour underneath there, so I want to make that pop as well. I didn't want just silver or blue. I want, I want him to stand out as best I can. So yeah, I just went around the model, uh, picking out all these gold parts, and I did it also on the other two models, on their scabbard and what I want the gold in them. Uh, just before I forget, what I didn't show, because I didn't press record, is that I did all the chain mail in plate mail steel, which is like the mid-tone out of the wall painted metallics. I just did give that a quarter on all the chain mail. Right under the wash, so this is my wash recipe, uh, equal parts of the black ink, the dark tone and the blue tone. So what I tend to do is obviously mix it in equal parts and apply it all over the model, including the gold areas. This will darken down and it'll get right in the crevices because the black ink has a bit less of a surface tension. It creeps into the recess brilliantly, I think, and I think it looks spot on. So yeah, just apply this in all over the model. Next step is we're going to start to uh, highlight the nightshade armor. So all we do is just take the base color, which in my case is the nightshade, add a touch of shining spear, silver to it to bring it up slightly, about 50-50 mix, and then we just start applying it to the highest points. This will bring back a shine, and it also is uh, start to make the ninja pop and take the dullness off it a little bit. Right, so next step is we're going to drive the highlights a bit more, so we're going to put a bit more shining silver into it, so it's about 70% shining silver, 30 nightshade, and all we're going to do is go around the miniature and picking out the highest points and the sharpest edges, just a little bit more interest in the plate armor as we go around the model. So we're going to um, do the gold now, exact same process, 50-50 of the gold and the silver, go around picking all the high highlights and then we'll mix in a bit more silver so we get about 70 silver, 30 gold and we'll just pick out the high points. Right so under the flesh I use Panzer Aces flesh colours, so it's the base flesh, the highlight and the shadow. So the first colour I put under the face is the a mixture of the base flesh and the shadow flesh just a touch of shadow and just deepens it down a little bit and this is my base coat this is the darkest i'll allow it to go right so once the base coat is dry i'll come back in with the base flesh and all i do is hit the highest points so the the likes of the cheeks the brow the nose the chin Go around hitting it with all this base colour um, and what this is, this is like a pre-highlight before the wash goes on. So this is my wash recipe, I use gaming skin colour and lamy medium, a glaze if you like. So all I do is um, mix a 50-50 mix and I just apply this all over the uh, over the flesh. And what the ink does and also the, uh, the medium, it thins it down so it runs into the recesses without staining too much of the skin colour that we've already laid down. Right, so after the wash is dried, uh, we're going to work on our highlights. So what I like to do, I like to start from the base flesh and add a few drops of highlight flesh to the mixture as I go along. So we're basically layering it. 
Um, and what this does, it just brings a nice gradual, and all you're doing is just hitting the highest points, just getting them smaller and smaller and smaller. It's just until you're literally just dotting, say, the nose, the chin, the cheeks, and obviously, like, parts of the brow and the eyebrow. Um, apologies for the crap angle. Um, I didn't realise I was doing this at the time, but the face is small. Uh, so, yeah, but like I say, a few shots here to have a better look at what it ends up like. Right, so under the tunics, I went for a, a blue green colour tunic, and these are the colours I'll be using. Um, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a split tunic, so one side blue, one side green. So, as you can see here, I'm going to start blocking in the Prussian blue colour. Um, just being neat as I can not to hit any of them metallics because you don't want to uh, spoil the work you've already done. But like you say, if you do hit them, uh, it's easy as a sword to go back to your silver and gold and just touch them in. But we all make mistakes. As Bob Ross once said, we don't make mistakes, we make happy little accidents. Right, so uh, on the other side of the tunic, same step as before, but this time we're going to use the German dark green. And we're just going to do exactly what we did before, just block in the colours, uh, keep it neat as we can and start defining that split down the middle the best we can. Right, so in the, this step we're going to do a bit of pre-shading. So what I did was um, put a bit of olive green into the German dark green mix. So it's about 70% German dark green and about 30 olive green. And all I'm going to start doing is just picking the few highlights so when we do apply the wash, we get a nice gradual flow and we can also pick out them points of interest as well. So we do exactly the same for the blue side, but this time we use 70 Prussian blue and 30 ghost blue. And all we do is exactly what I said before, we just go around picking the high points on the blue side of the model. And like you see, we'll just get the points of interest and the highlights done before the shading goes on. Right, so under the wash stage, uh, we're just going to grab our dark tone wash, uh, thin with just a touch of water and apply it all over the tunic. Just be neat with it and just watch out for any pooling so you don't get any uh, horrible tide marks on it. Right, so once the wash is dry, we're going to start highlighting the tunic. So we're going to start with the blue side. So we'll go back to our 70-30 mix of Prussian blue and gorse white. And all we start doing is hitting the top part of the tunic if so if you can imagine like a light hitting from the top you want to start getting a nice blended layer on the the ruffle part if you like and all we do here is we just keep adding a bit of ghost white every time we go back and this is slowly build up the contrast so the tunic starts getting its own sort light light source and if you like See here, I'm just starting to pick out a few bits of edge highlight just to make it pop from the armor a little bit and it stands out a little bit more. So, under the green side that we're doing now, um, exact same as what we just did in the last method, uh, but this time obviously we're using our uh, mix of 70, 30 German dark green and olive green. And all we're doing is just obviously reapplying the highlights, keeping the shade, the shade, and all we're doing as the steps go on is that we're going to keep adding little, little bits of olive green to the mix to get a nice contrast on the tunic. Same again, uh, just think about the light hitting from the top and just think about where the ruffles and where the light would hit and just keep doing that until you're happy. So 
So moving on to the uh, horse saddle and stirrups. Uh, I use a base colour of charred brown and what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to block in all the, the saddles and the stirrup leather parts. Uh, I'll do blocking the colours and then I'm going to go on to a bit of pre-highlighting which consists of uh, a touch of base flesh in, thin it down to about a wash consistency and then I'm just going to start stippling on the saddle because the saddle is very flat so I want to, I want something there to make it pop a little bit. So if those of you that don't know what stippling is, uh, it's basically you, you just dot tiny little dots on it and it builds up a nice texture to it. Just remember when you're doing the uh, stippling, just keep your paint like to a wash consistency and slowly build up them layers and it, it will pop at the end of it. Right, so moving on to the uh, wash stage, um, we're going to grab our Rickland flesh wash and we're going to start putting it on them dark leather parts. Reason for this is that it, uh, with the wash it's already brown so it really helps with the dark leather. You could go back and use the um, the skin glaze that I used in the previous step on the on the faces, either or, it still does the same job. So here I'm going with a 50-50 mix of the uh, charred brown and the base flesh. And what I start doing here is I start stippling on the edge uh, highlights. The reason why I'm stippling on the very edges is to give it the weather the the worn, cracked look to it. What I do, I just keep adding a bit of more base flesh into it and just slowly build up the layers and you, you get a nice warm look to the dark leather. As you can see here, I'm starting to add a bit of a bit more detail to the, uh, the horse saddle. Just a few light scratches just for a little bit of visual interest and just make it stand out a little bit more. So moving on to his um, scabbard. Um, I wanted a nice bright broad colour and following the triad of colours using the colour wheel, uh, red or orange is always good because he's obviously got the blue and green tunic on. So I've decided to go for this colour. Um, so what I did, just started basing the, the scabbard in this colour and I went from there. So I grabbed the uh, dark tone wash and I just applied this all over the scabbard uh, to give it a bit of shadow and deepen down that red a little bit. Ready for the highlights. So I'm going to start on the highlights now. All we're going to do is uh, grab a 70 of Scarlet Red, 30 of the Wild Rider Red because it has an orange tint into it. We're just going to edge highlight the edge of them swords and slowly bring it up to a 50-50 mix so we get lots of contrast on the scabbard. And it looks alright I think at the end. Right, so under the gloves, so I wanted like a, a dark red leather, basically like a Chesterfield armchair for those that know. If not, Google it, you'll sure find out what colour I'm after. Um, so I started with the base colour of charred brown, base coat of the lot with this. Then I started added, adding uh, little bits of scarlet red into the mix, slowly bringing it up um, and hitting like where the light will catch on the gloves, so the top of the gloves. Just keep adding a little bit of red every time and start hitting the features, so like the knuckles, the fingers, and just work my way along like that. And it, uh, I'm quite happy how it turned out. There might be a colour out there that has this sort of, that sort of looks like this, what I wanted it to look like, but I couldn't find it at the time, so I had to make some. But I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. So as you can see here, I'm just hitting the very top highlights of the uh, gloves. The majority of the mix is probably, what, 40 charred brown, 60 scarlet red. And all I'm doing is just picking out the highest features. These are the ones, so the, the knuckles, the uh, the fingers, top of the gloves, um, the edges of the glove, bit of edge highlighting. And this will just, this will just cement the uh, the red look that I'm going for, but it's also like a leather look as well. Like you say, it is the look I'm wanting. <laughs> All right, so under the leather straps next. Right, so um, here we are uh, basing in the leather straps. So I went for the red leather. 
Um, I'm just going around the entire model and I'm going to start blocking in that nice red leather color. Um, just before we start shading as well, I'm going to add a touch of the base flesh to the mix. As per the rest of the model, I'm just going to um, add a bit of pre-highlight to it just before the shading goes on and it'll just make it look better in the long run. So here I'm just going to add the uh, wash, it's a strong tone I'm using. Uh, I'm just going to apply this all over the leather straps, they obviously give us the shadow and deepen down them colours. This is where the pre-highlight comes into it, because the colours you've already pre-highlighted have already popped a little bit when this dries. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So once the wash is dry, um, what I do is get a, I make a 50-50 mix of the red leather and the base flesh. And all I do is start stippling under the edges of the uh, leather straps. Obviously, this is, as per the rest of the model, it gives a nice worn leather look to it, cracked and stuff like that, and just a bit more visual interest. Like you say, I, I wouldn't do this on every model, but because this is a command base, I want them to look a bit, bit more special, a bit more time spent on it. So yeah, this is why I'm doing this way for. All right. And with this bit, we just do a quick look around the model, any bits we missed, any bits we touched, and we just sort them out there and then. And there we are. Three, all done. So let's have a better look at this one, shall we? Let's see, I'll put, put up some uh, bureau, but that's what you can make if you follow the steps I've just shown you. Lovely little model, really nice sculpt, uh, very impressed with first core. There's a musician there, all proud with his little uh, St. George's Cross there. The nice here, all the methods used on these two were exactly the same as that one, so I'm hoping I've not missed anything out. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give you a better look at them a bit closer. Um, but that's episode one done. Uh, sorry, part one done. So moving forward, I'll be done with these, and I'll be moving on to these the horses. Go and get these done for part two, and then, like you say, part three consists of the beer. So. If you stuck around this long, thank you. It's much appreciated. Um, subscribe and like if you want to see more. And if you want to see the next episode. And like I say, I look forward to seeing you again. So um, watch what he's doing. Happy Wargaming. See you shortly.